Here's a method that I use to write recursive functions. I, I used it recently with my girlfriend. We wrote this uh, code to, uh, if you have a bunch of known, uh, a bunch of values, like you know what the values are of these different parameters, then there's equations that can tell you um, how those parameters are related. So like, let's say that you have uh, A equals B plus C. If you know any two of those, then you can use, if you know A and B, for example, then you can use A equals B plus C and the value of A and the value of B to calculate what C is. Um, and so we were trying to figure out, okay, given a starting set of things that you know and these equations, what things could you figure out? Uh, and um, this method that I'm about to describe uh, is the method that we used to figure out, like write the code that would figure that out. And um, what's interesting is that I didn't know when I started, like I read the final code and realized, oh, so it works by doing blah, blah, blah. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's interesting that this method works even if you don't know ahead of time where you're gonna end up. Uh, so I think that's pretty cool. So um, the first thing to do is just write uh, the recursive function, uh, or the function that's probably going to be recursive. Write the cases for 0 through 4. Um, so if you have an array as your input, um, that would be like an empty, empty array, uh, an array with one element, or an array with two elements, up to four elements. Um, or if you have a number as your input, usually you start off at zero and you go up through four. Um, and sometimes you start off at one and you go up to five. Um, but uh, so you do that, then you rewrite. Uh, and, and when you write the, the, the first ones, you do it as concretely as possible. Um, and then you rewrite them in reverse order. So the last one, the the four case, rewrite that in terms of the three case, rewrite the three case in terms of the two case, and so on. Work your way back as far as you can, and then write the recursive function. Um, after you've done the first two steps, the pattern will become obvious, and I'll show you what that looks like. Um, so sum zero is going to be a function that all it does is if, it, if you give it a, an array of, of length zero, it will give you back the sum of all of the things in that array. And uh, we're just gonna return zero in that case. Oh, uh, whoops. <laughs> um, okay, so we just returned zero. And so here it is in action. Uh, if we console.log sum of a zero length array, we see that it works, cool. And then sum one, we are going to uh, figure out what is at the very beginning of that array and return that. And here it is in action again. Let's run it and we can see the results. Um, if we have an array with a zero in it, then the result is still zero. If we have an array with a six, the result is six. Okay, and this might seem kind of tedious, but I have found that it's better to write too many of these and then the pattern becomes super duper obvious than it is to try to like sit there and think, okay, what is it gonna end up being? <laughs> it just takes too long. Um, just writing, writing this stuff out is what I find to be the fastest thing to do. Um, okay, so if you have an array that has exactly two elements, then you can do take the element at position zero and add the element at position one and that'll give you the sum and then if we run it on these two, we get zero for this one and eight for this one, zero and eight. Okay, so far so good. Sum three, again, um, the pattern is starting to become obvious. Take the thing at index zero, the thing at index one, and the thing at index two and add them together. And notice that this code, I'm not doing anything. I'm actually trying very, very hard to be as dumb as possible writing this code. And the, the reason for that is because that makes it much, much easier later to see the pattern in the code that I wrote uh, and then write the the case, whoops, ah, write the recursive version of it all. Um, so we got 
this one is going to be zeros and this one is going to be 16. Cool. Um, so now we're on to sum four. We've got take numbers at index zero, one, two, three, add them all together. And again, let's run that. We get zero and 19. Um, and that looks right. Cool. Uh, so now, now that we've done that, maybe, uh, maybe while watching me do this, you can see the pattern developing. So every time we just add one more number at the end. Um, so if I were to take this right here and rewrite it in terms of sum three, so if I somehow use the body of sum three in here to do some of this work, um, that's that's what it means. That's what that's what we're going to end up doing here. So we're going to rewrite each of the things in terms of the one that comes before it. So sum four, we're going to rewrite using sum three. So here is sum four, and I'm here importing the definition of sum three. Um, so sum four is take the element at position zero and then use sum three uh, on all of the other elements. And again, uh, the goal now is to try to make it so that the body of this function looks as similar as possible to the body of this function. So this is going to be sum three defined using sum two. So this is sum four using sum three. Here's sum three using sum two. Um, so again, we're going to take the thing at position zero, and we're going to use sum two on the rest of the array. Um, and, oh, I don't know if I ran the last one. I did not. Let's run it. Okay, we got zero and 19, so that still works. And then on this one, let's, uh, let's run this. We get zero and 16, so six plus two plus eight is 16. Cool. Um, so now we are down to defining sum 2 in terms of sum 1. So sum 2 is take the thing at index 0 and then use sum 1 on the rest of the array. And if I scroll up, I think I can get them both on the same... Yes. Oh, oh not quite. Um, is that it? Yeah, okay, cool. Uh, so there. So this line looks very, very similar to this line, the body of sum 3 defined using sum 2, and the body of sum 2 using sum 1, they look very, very similar. The only difference is right here. This, this single character is different. Um, and that's, that's a good thing. Uh, that's exactly what we're looking for, and we'll just run this just to be sure. 0 and 8, cool. Uh, I'm running it because I, uh, if I run it and it actually runs, then I know for sure that I don't have any typos. Um, <laughs> actually, I think I see a typo right here. Um, yeah, I see a typo. So here I'm providing an array that has two elements in it, and I am calling it on sum one, and one is supposed to take arrays that only have one element in it. Okay. Um, but again, we see the same pattern, take the thing at the very beginning and use the previous one on all of the rest of the array. Um, so uh, once we get to sum one, we actually, we can rewrite that one using sum zero, but sum zero, there's no, there's nothing, there, this, uh, this one's different. We have to treat this one differently. There's no writing it in terms of the n minus one um, for this problem. Sometimes there is, but this one there is not. Um, and let's make sure that it works. Okay, it does. Okay, so now that we have seen all of those different things, and we see that the zero is different than all of the other ones, but all of the other ones are very, very similar to, a, to each other. Um, so they all look basically like that. This and this will be our, the body of our recursive version of the function. So we need to check whether we are in this case and then do this action and uh, that's that's what we'll do for that one um, and if we're not in that case then we're in this case and so we should do this action so let me go down to the bottom and I'll expand this 
So if we're in the zero case, then we do the zero action. And if we're not, then we do the thing that uh, all of the other ones did. So the only change here is instead of writing a specific number here, I'm just writing M, N, like November. And that is the same as the function that we are in. So that's mechanistically, you just do that and you'll come up with the right answer. Um, and then let's, oh, I probably should have had more cases here. Um, it works for that. Uh, let's do six and then uh, six, two and eight uh, and three. Oops, three. And let's try running that. Cool. Uh, uh oh. Oh, haha. <laughs> so. <laughs> It failed because I'm using the wrong thing. Uh, so I'll use some n uh, on all of those. Oh no. Oh no, I have typos. I have so many typos. What is wrong? Okay. Some n numbers length. Uh, some n numbers dot slice. What is the typo? Uh, what's the lot log? Oh, here. I'm pulling in the wrong sum. Okay. Let's see. Okay, cool. Yeah, now it works. Uh, so I got 0, 6, 8, 16, 19. Okay, cool. So now this sum n works for any length, uh, and that's how you write recursive functions.